Hello guys! As you can tell by the title, today I'm going to be reviewing, telling you which ones I use and like, telling you which ones I don't use or like and why, menstrual slash period products are basically the same. But, just so you know, I had to film this video three times. One, because I didn't like the first take, and two, because I didn't inform myself enough and I felt like I needed to be better informed about the products I was using before I told you to use them. So this is the final product. Here we go. First, I want to talk about the products I tried and didn't like and why I don't like them. So, one is, I think I filmed a video about this like a long time ago, but I feel kind of bad for saying this because I know so many people love it and so many people use it, but it is the Diva Cup. I wanted to be able to use this so, so, so bad. Like, I literally bought this before I, like, this was the first sustainable period product I've ever bought. I was probably, like, 18 or 19. And I was like, oh my god, one, I get to save money, and two, I get to save the environment. Oh my god, yes, I want to do this. And I didn't inform myself on the bodily requirements of a menstrual cup. And I didn't inform myself about other menstrual cups that are a little bit more aware of the different body types and how the size of the cup can affect that. So... But that being said, the reason I don't like the period cup is two reasons. One, I feel like I understand that the silicone has to be stiff in order to like, in order to like pop open and like stay inside the vaginal canal. But when I take it out, I, it, it's uncomfortable. I would say it hurts, but like, it's just uncomfortable. I don't like it. I don't like the way it feels when it comes out. Also, I didn't know this, but I have a, I'm not entirely sure about this because I literally just checked like 20 minutes ago, but I have like a lower, mid to lower cervix and Diva Cups work for middle, high, and like normal range size cervixes, but they don't work for low. And I've tried this literally 10 times and every single time I leak, it could be user error, but I also think that my cervix is inside the cup, which it's not supposed to be inside, it's supposed to be outside, it's not supposed to be in it, because as it fills up, it's going to have to overflow somewhere. It's supposed to be like right here, and unfortunately for me, it just doesn't work. So I thought, hey, is there a different kind of reusable menstrual catching product that I can use? And yes, there is. It is called Ziggy Cup. Now, I did not make the same mistake I made with my menstrual cup. I did not buy the Ziggy Cup. What I bought was a disposable alternative. Technically, Ziggy Cup is the usable alternative to this that I'm about to show you. It is called Soft Disc or Flex Cup. Flex Disc, whatever. This is the softest brand, but Flex and Soft Disc are the same company. They just have like a more expensive one and a cheaper one. This is a disposable menstrual disc receptacle thing. And basically, it comes in a little purple package, like a little square, like a little pad almost. And when you open it up, this is inside. It, it literally looks like this when you open it up. What you're supposed to do is open the little thing in the jig make sure that the rim is down and it's not this way see as you can see this is a lot smaller than this make sure it's the right way and then you literally just like slip it in but the thing is with a menstrual cup you're putting it in like a tampon this probably is gonna sound really confusing but if you try it you'll understand what I mean so Whenever you put in a menstrual cup, you know, you're folding it and then you're putting it in as if you were putting it in a tampon. So you go 
like this like you go you just kind of scoop it and then it opens and then it stays like that with a menstrual disc you're literally just like you're gonna tilt it a little bit but not as much not like this it's gonna be more like this and so with the with the menstrual disc you're sliding it in and then you're hooking it underneath your pelvic bone so this is what it looks like inside obviously this isn't gonna be all the way out it's gonna be a little bit squished up because your vaginal canal isn't this big but it just needs to be like big enough to where it can you know you know what I mean so you hook it under your pubic bone so your finger is gonna be pretty far in your vagina whether or not you're putting in a cup or you're putting in a disc it's gonna be pretty far in there the difference with this is with the cup you would pull the bottom well actually when you use a cup you're supposed to pop the seal take the bottom and pull it out with a disc what you do is it's hooked underneath the pubic bone so you have to bear down so it releases it from the pubic bone and then you hook and you pull it out like that i will say personally for me taking out both of these is messy but like i said i had leakage every single time i've used my menstrual cup i only had leakage twice using this so and i use this five or six times there's somebody on the roof outside of my house okay and I've used this five or six times so you know um yeah so I literally just checked my cervix to see where it sits I'm also on birth control so I don't know if that affects my cervical position and this is probably to my I don't care I live on the internet you guys are my life so my cervix I can feel it my finger can be inserted this far into my vagina before I feel my cervix. So like right below the first knuckle. And when I was reading, it said that means I have a low cervix, which means the Diva cup is not gonna work for me, but if I wanna use a menstrual cup, I can use another brand that has those different sizes. So it's the lower cervix, um, the lower sitting cervix. I could use that if I wanted to, or I thought this would work but again I think because my cervix is probably sitting like halfway inside of this thing it's only being it's not like being able to fill up all the way and also with this I think maybe as well as with the menstrual cup I think I might have the issue because my cervix is so low that when it when the diva cup pops open my cervix is on the outside instead of on the inside and this I think when I'm pushing it in because again my cervix is low I think I might be pushing it up to my cervix instead of making sure it's like that. Does that make sense? That's why I think I leave it with these two products. And you know, it really sucks because I, the first two days I used this, perfect. It was literally perfect. But I don't know what happened. I just started leaking. And like, I don't know how to fix it. And that's the issue because like I did everything. I made sure that it was hooked underneath my cervix, like I got my cervix inside of it. I made sure that it was behind my pelvic bone and it sucks, but like I feel like maybe when I sneeze, because when you sneeze you're contracting your like abdominal muscles and in order to get this unhooked from your pelvis you have to bear down which is contracting your abdominal muscles and like pushing as if you were taking a dump and I, what happens when you do that is it comes, here's the pelvic bone, it comes out and honestly, it's probably instead of being like up here, it's like down here, which can cause like it can move around, it can cause spillage and stuff like that. So I think that might be an issue. So not gonna use a deep cup because one, I don't like the way it feels when I take it out. And two, I think it just doesn't fit with my body. And I'm not gonna use the soft discs because I literally used up all the ones that I bought and it came in a pack of 14. So, yeah, the first time I leaked with my soft disc was because I left it in for more than 12 hours, so obviously it's going to leak because it only holds up to like 12 hours, that's it. But then I'm like, maybe my cervix isn't the problem, maybe I just have a really heavy flow. Because they always say, you know, up to 12 hours unless you have a heavy flow, and it's like, how the frick do I know if I have a heavy flow or not? I don't know. I'm just really upset by this. Like, I'm so literally about to start crying, I'm on my period, don't come for me 
I'm just so upset because I want to use a reusable period product that is sustainable and that I can keep forever, but my body is just not letting me. It feels like everything I want to do, my body is like, no, couldn't use the IUD, can't use a freaking menstrual product, can't do a back bend because I had to get surgery. Like, my body's just like, everything you want, I'm going to take from you. Anyway, enough with that little tangent. Those are the products I'm not using and why. I will let you guys know in a later video if I do decide to try soft disc again and if I decide to purchase the Ziggy Cup. I think what I'm going to do is, I think what I'm going to do is next time I go to my doctor, my gynecologist, I'm going to be like, yo, what kind of cervix do I have? Because I really do not know. So yeah. Now, let's get into the products that I have been using. Because of my whole reusable menstrual cup journey, I decided to try out a wasteful product just because I wanted to see what it was like. It is called Down There Wipes. When you are using, when I was using soft disc, it is very, very messy. Like, so messy. Because despite the fact that it is a reciprocal. When you're pulling it out of the vagina, you have to tilt it, and if it's full, it's coming out. So my hands would get bloody, you know, like this would be really bloody, and it was just like, it doesn't bother me because ever since I've had a period, every single period I've ever had, I've leaked. So I'm just like, whatever, this is life. Um, it's another reason why I want to use one of these because I just want to live a week free. Anyway, so I've been using these. I really like them. Probably not going to buy them again because personally, I feel like they might be a waste of money and also because they are pretty wasteful and they are, you know, like they're using, what's it called? Using materials that don't necessarily have to be used. Although this does say it is a, um, flushable item I would never ever ever flush any sort of wipe just because it's flushable doesn't mean it will disintegrate at the rate it needs to like this could technically disintegrate but it will take months to disintegrate so if you're using these every single time you go to the bathroom you have a whole bunch of stuff in your pipes and it's just not working so that's what I've been using another brand I love is Cora. I stopped using Cora specifically because of how much it is and like I understand that a portion of the proceeds are going to women who don't have access to menstrual products and like women who are in other countries who are missing school specifically because of their period because they don't have access to period products but your girl can't afford it so I found another brand. But what I did like, I liked Cora's um, tampons, liners, and thin pads. So because I'm on birth control, I'm on the next plan on. It's in my arm. Um, the first period I had after, after the first period I had after inserting it, I was spotting. And like the entire time up until like three days ago when I got a real period. So I've been spotting pretty much ever since my first period on Nexplanon. So I was like, freak, I have to use some liners. And what would happen is I would wear the liners and then one day it would be like a little bit more than spotting. Probably like double spotting, like twice as much as spotting. So it wouldn't be enough to wear a normal pad, but it would be too much to wear a liner. So I really liked their thin pads. Plus it's made out of organic cotton, and again I said their proceeds go to women who need it, so that's why I really like their brand. And like I was noticing when I was starting to use pads that were like um, non-organic and had all these other like chlorine and all these different chemicals in it, um, I'd be itchy down there. So I noticed that, so that's why I kind of like the organic ones better. And I found another brand while I was using Cora. I was also using this brand. Because what I was doing, I was using Cora tampons and then this brand 
pads before I got on my birth control. And then I had to use liners, so then I started to like look into the whole liner situation because I never used them before. But I found this brand, it's called, this is L. This is their liners. And this is their regular pads. I really like this brand because as I'm literally gonna read off the back of the packaging, no exhausted cliches, just the quality you expect and the authenticity you deserve. Thanks for helping a girl out. We believe that periods should only end sentences, not education and opportunity. In many countries around the world, girls miss school due to lack of access to period products. For every L pad you purchase, L provides access to a pad to a girl in need. But it's not just what you give, it's how you give. By supporting female entrepreneurs in the creation of pads in the, for their communities, we strengthen the power of women's collective action for lasting change. So I did a little bit more research into this brand and on their website they also have information about STDs, information about condoms, um, information about essentially their, their, their um, purpose and why they are who they are. So and I really like that. Plus everything, because I buy this at Target because I don't go to Walmart anymore, everything I saw there a Target was the same price. So when I bought this 100 liners, it was $6.99. When I bought these 42 regular pads, it was $6.99. I'm gonna say that again. 100 liners for $6.99. You kidding me? I was like, for the amount of liners that I have to use pretty much every single day of my life now for three years, this is amazing. So, that's kind of why they're my like, go-to now. Also, again, they're made from organic and non-pesticide or, um, you know, herbicide or something like that. So, that's what I have been using and why. But, yeah. Let me know if you guys know anything about reusable menstrual products and also how they work with people who have low cervixes because being somebody who is active in the minimal waste um anti-pollution reducing garbage and consumption as somebody who's very prevalent in that area i kind of feel discouraged because I know as a woman, I have to use a lot of these disposable trash creating products and it sucks whenever I want to be a part of a movement where women are using reusable products but my body literally won't let me. So I kind of feel like, like I feel like I'm not doing my part but when in reality like I physically can't. Like I physically, my body is like hey you physically cannot put this inside of you because you're not, it's not compatible. So. Again, I will let you guys know if I decide to invest in a smaller cup for lower cervixes or if I even have a lower cervix or if I'm just being stupid and I don't know how to use these products. So yeah, what kind of menstrual products do you guys use and why? Do you like tampons? Do you not like tampons? I'm just annoyed because I really liked not feeling something coming out of my body. You know what I mean? Like I really enjoyed not feeling the whole process of menstruation <laughs> that kind of sounds weird but it's like i'm not disconnecting from menstruation because i'm literally sticking my finger halfway up my vagina to get this thing in and out but i'm also kind of disconnecting from it because i'm not feeling it expel from my body and whatever the heck these whatever women who free bleed or whatever like no i don't want that so yeah, this is a 20 minute video, hopefully I can cut it down. See you guys later. <laughs>